throughout the nation and around the globe. From his heart to yours, it's Dear James Live, bringing you intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wonderful Wednesdays, your intuitive insights and human design guidance. I am your host, Dear James. We appear to be having a little bit of technical difficulty in bringing the Lady Jacqueline on today. We will see. Hopefully, um, we will be able to bring her into the broadcast. Whew, sorry, I just had to run really quickly. So anyways, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is our weekly current energies update, intuitive insights to your life questions, and human design guidance. And so um, as you join us, please put your comments in. Let us know that you're there. That's the only way we know that you are joining us. And if you have questions, so please put them in the comments and we will take them throughout the broadcast. And see, you can see I'm like, oh, I got to catch my breath here. Got to bring myself together. And why? It's these current energies. And of course, we have coming up the Virgo full moon. So that it's called the worm moon. So that's very interesting. However, we got full moon energy going on. And it always happens prior, you know, pre the actual day. So Friday, early, early, early morning here on the uh, in the U.S., It'll occur at 1.17 a.m. Mountain Time, 12.17, just after midnight on Friday, early Friday morning. And so, exactly. Jacqueline is just trying to make an entrance again. <laughs> we never know what's happening. with the, You know, with the world of technologies and all of these things going on, it's always quite the, uh, quite the event. So, hello to everyone. Um, and this is an interesting thing. Those of you that are joining us through the private Facebook group, well, we finally figured out that because it is a private Facebook group, none of your identities show. So uh, it, what's happening for me on this end, I'm seeing Facebook user, good afternoon, my lovelies, and Facebook user, good day, dear ones, and Facebook user, hello, and Facebook user, Jacqueline is just trying to make an entrance again, and I have no idea who you are. <laughs> And that's all right. So if you're joining from one of our pages, we will see you. We will know um, your identity, so to speak. And if you're joining from our private Facebook group, we will not know. It'll just come up as a Facebook user. Um, either and all are, are wonderful. So let's jump in on the current energies um, because they're really pretty amazing. Um, and the hexagrams that are associated with the current energies right now. And there's a building. They were just saying to me, there's a culmination. There's a building. Um, and this is so very true of the, of the fact that we are literally ending. We are coming up. We are days away. Um, March 20th, I believe it's Sunday, is the equinox. And so where, of course, it's the balance. The, uh, it happens twice a year. And so we have the, the spring equinox and the aut autumnal equinox. The spring one is where the northern hemisphere turns, you know, is entering spring, and the uh, the fall one is where we're going into the winter. And hello, Haley. Now I see you. <laughs> and so we are, and of course, when those equinoxes happen, the length of day and night of light and dark are perfectly balanced. It's the it's the harmony of these things. And so there's a beauty about this, and it's also. So come Sunday when that happens, we literally end Pisces. It's the end of the astrological season, and we begin a new season. We begin this new, we begin with the first, with zero degrees of Aries. So it begins the astrological wheel, and we begin again, and we go around the, the zodiac. And so there is this culmination, this moment that's occurring right now. And when I sat down to listen, what they said right off the bat was the overall theme for today is Magic and miracles abound. And there was just a little dot, dot, dot. Are you looking? Question mark. And so it's a very profound statement for all of us of magic and miracles abound. Are we looking for them? And the definition 
of the word abound is to exist or have in large numbers or amounts. And it made me sit, as, as I was doing that, I was looking out the window and I thought, now see, that's funny because as I look out and I'm looking at the trees and, you know, and the, uh, the squirrels running through the trees and everything, and I'm like, magic, miracles. It can be a blade of grass. That's a, that's a miracle. That's a magic piece. That's a magic moment. It can be the fluttering of something going by and it catches your, your attention and it inspires or it invokes a memory or something. Magic, miracles. So we often think of magic and miracles as being big ticket items, big things, or we only value them when they are that. However, in this instance, what we are really looking at and what the, the universe, the unseen is speaking to is magic and miracles abound. Are you looking? So let me know in the comments um, how you feel about magic and miracles. Do you see the small and the large? Are you open to them? Are you looking? Because they're really, they're saying in, in this moment, there, we, are, we are crossing this threshold. There's, there's a threshold moment here, and that's true. We're, we're talking about the end of the astrological season. So we're entering a whole new cycle. We're crossing this threshold. And yet there seems to be a bigger one that we're crossing. And so it's for us, remember last week they said to us, you know, these things that are going on in the world, and it's already assured, the outcome's already assured, do not lose faith. And here they're talking about, this week they're talking about magic and miracles abound. Are you looking for them? You know, are you looking? Do you see them? Are you experiencing them? And look for the small miracles as well. Allow those to come into your life and everything. So that, because it's going to tie in with the two numbers that are really, we have double numbers this week. So today is March 16th, 2022. 316, 2022. The 16, 1 and 6, become a 7. The same is true when you add 316, 2022. When you add that all up, it, be, it becomes a 16, which becomes a 7. So both the day and the day, year, month, the overall energies are double 16s, double 7s, which is phenomenal. And so when we look at this, and so before I get into the hexagrams and, and read this, the second thing they said with the magic and miracles abound, are you looking in this the definition of abound? They went to the word authenticity. And they said authenticity as a root cause hyphen foundation. As we begin anew, a new cycle of being. So here again, you've heard the Lady Jacqueline and I talking a lot about your authentic selves showing up authentically. This root cause, this, this pulling, you can feel it, this pulling, this calling, that's the word I wanted, this calling to be our authentic selves. And we look, and when, when you look back at like from COVID, this past two and a half years and so forth, and how many people have left what, they, what they've done due to COVID, due to the way that shaped and shifted the world and shook it. And all of a sudden people are, you know, they, they're like, I was an attorney and I was doing this. And now I'm a pastry shelf owning my own bakery because my true passion was, the, was, was baking, was being a pastry chef. But we often never allow ourselves to believe that it's true to believe that who we truly are, who we authentically truly are, who we authentically truly want to be, and want to be meaning who we are. It's not possible, I can't do it, I can't make a living, it won't happen, blah, 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 right? Well, here in this new season, we're at, we're at this threshold, we're gonna transfer, and it's all about being our authentic selves. It's all about Soul source alignment. Align yourself with your soul, and thereby, what we're going to experience is authenticity. Magic and miracles, authenticity. And the last thing they said before we get into all of the, uh, the into the hexagrams, and they're just amazing, these double 16s, double 7s, 
the the third item they they said to me was cause and effect so we can see the cause and effect and these doubles this is where the doubles and the hexagrams play it's cause and effect so be mindful be open to the magic and miracles be open to aligning with your authentic self if you place a thousand roadblocks in your way oh nothing wrong with it everything's purposeful it just doesn't have to be that way it doesn't have to take that long you can align with yourself in in one obstacle okay or no obstacle you just align yes got it okay now let me wallace d waddles and you hear me speak about this a lot wallace d waddles if when when i know my authentic self and i know what i want to do and it while it may be just insurmountable or you you believe it to be impossible the only thing that's required is for you to stop and sit and go okay soul okay source what's my next step wallace d waddles small acts in great ways what's the next step that i can take in order to move me into my alignment into my authentic self and thereby i'm living the life of my dreams it's that simple and we just have to be the ones to keep taking the steps i want to just add in here before i share a short story with you so haley i'm definitely starting to notice more or I suppose recognizing them, exactly. The more we just recognize, the more we just stop and go, look at that, the wind. I was sitting yesterday with my mother and, uh, on the front porch. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful weather, slight breeze, cool sun on your face. And everything was like a fairy tale in a way. And I just sat there in a state of gratitude and a state of bliss and joy appreciating that moment for me that's magic that's a miracle that's that's because we're open to it we recognize that it's not just oh uh, you're not just sitting on the porch and yeah that's nice it's not that it's something more and thereby we appreciate it comes from this state of gratitude we begin to appreciate more and more and more where literally when you look at that single blade of grass or you know the little uh What's oh, the little, uh, the cute little bugs with the, the red, with the little dots? Yeah, it's going to come to me. You guys put it in the comments. I can't, I, uh, ladybug. Something so, or a, a firefly, you know, where they light up, they glow, and they, wow. It's wow moments. It's mic drop moments. That's magic and miracles that abound. It's being authentic, bringing ourselves into this beauty and it's cause and effect because everything we do it's cause what's you know it's causal for every action there's a reaction but cause and effect is the action the energy the the gratitude the awareness as haley was just speaking to this noticing as they said are you looking it's and we're going to bring this because vicky just mentioned something my daughter who is autistic has taught me the magic of the smallest everyday things she is my miracle absolutely because when we can see when we're open when we can see life we have this belief that if if you're if if you're in a state of physical challenge or something like this or a challenge that it's less than i always look at it and say no 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 how great thou art how amazing in Vicky with Vicky and her daughter from an autis autism perspective how she's sharing the divine with us how she's sharing what the world is unfiltered it doesn't have she doesn't put on all these masks there's a purity in her autism there's a purity in her divinity so too with all of us however we tend to place masks and labels and identities and all of a sudden we're our authentic selves our true selves are so burdened and weighed down that we have to unlayer or we have you know wonderful midlife crisis <laughs> or 
You know, they're just giving me the, or, because, you know, again, the universe, true north, our soul source connection, true north, they're always helping us. They're always guiding us. And they'll whisper and they'll tap and they'll give caution, you know, little yellow caution lights. And then you get the, you know, they pull out the cosmic two by four. Oh, okay, it's in the fine print. Now you said that if we didn't, you know, if you didn't do X by, by Y, here's the cosmic two by four. But the beauty and the miracle in, in Vicky's case, in Haley's case, as they're sharing with everyone, see miracle, magic and miracles abound. Are you looking? Are you seeing them? Are you open and receptive to them? And yes, it may come in the cloak of opposites. It may come in a state of challenge. As long as you remain open, you'll always see the miracle. You'll always see the magic. We just have to be open to it. We just have to be open to receive. And that's, yes, somebody's a ladybug. Um, and I have a, a Facebook user with the identity that says, yes, I look for them every day and I keep a journal of them. I love looking back in my journal to see how blessed and thankful I am to the universe for these small, big miracles. What a, that's, I love that. I love that you journal them and that you're able to look back and see them. It's, it's really, that's a beautiful thing. And, it, and it's sparking a, a moment to share with you all before we get into the overall energies as well of the hexagrams. Remember to also disconnect from social media and all of these things so as to connect. It's like the selfies and the social media and all of these things. And, uh, you know, we're living our lives and everyone's posting their lives. But then you forget to live them, to, to really soak in, take in the moment. Because what's so amazing is we are celluloid. You know, we, our souls, our, our experience, our human experience is what we take with us. And so again, the more magic and miracles, those go with us. The more that we sit, so in that, like in the journaling aspect and being able to look at that or in the moment of appreciating it fully, not focused on, oh, look at this moment. I got to capture it and I got to post it. Well, now you're having that experience as opposed to, oh my gosh, look at this moment. Look at this moment that I'm in and let me just soak it up like the sun or the moon and let me just soak this moment up because that's what your soul, that's what you're going to take with you. That celluloid, that film, that, that impact, that moment is what goes with you. And so that's a really beautiful, just wanting to share that because of a little sidebar note that gave me a little sidebar note. So Haley said, okay, I wanted to pull some tarot cards for the collective. This is what I got. And this is the message I feel. The emperor taking spiritual guidance, especially from a mentor, the chariot. Interesting. You have the chariot, the chariot, having the courage and strength to move forward. The eight of swords recognizing that what's keeping you stuck is yourself and the bottom of the pack is the three of cups coming together with, with others for your joy. Love those, Haley. <laughs> Love those. Those are spot on because again, look, the emperor taking spiritual guidance. We're listening. We're connecting to, you're connecting to your soul source connection to your intuit, your intuition. This is true north GPS. Doesn't get any better. It's not your mind. It's not the thoughts. It's the knowing. It just comes in. The chariot. Having the courage and the strength to move forward. Because the chariot denotes that you movement. It denotes forward movement, action, and responsibility. Because again, you're being paraded. The chariot's being paraded through the streets and so forth. But it also, you know, they, they talk about the frisky uh, steeds, you know, the horses, the power of the horses pulling the chariot. And that you need to be in unity, in oneness with the horses and the chariot and you as the charioteur, charioteur, uh, charioteur is. You need to be in unity, in harmony with that. Otherwise, if you're not, 
any one of those three components, and it's interesting, three of cups coming together, unity coming together, so that the, the ride, the movement, the transition, the forward movement is just unified. It's, it's, it's peaceful. You don't have the, the experience of, of being dis, disconnected. And so there's this beauty, um, the eight of swords, what's keeping you stuck? What aren't you with? There's all the masks that we were just talking about um, when using with uh, the example of Vicky's daughter, the purity of how she experiences. She doesn't, she doesn't know any better. Meaning, how beautiful is that? She doesn't, it, and what do we, you know, often people say, well, I want you to live in my world. No, let us live in hers. Let us see life, the human experience, through her eyes. Because she's not wearing any masks. We do. <laughs> she doesn't. And so there's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful gift, magic, miracles that abound, that are, and it's authentic, it's pure. And thereby she's able to see. She's able to share her authentic self, which, you know, pull back the veil. Ah, okay. Look how pure that is with no agendas. It's beautiful. Haley, those cards are awesome. Thank you for doing that. Those were really, really, really spot on. And yes, and the Three of Cups. It's the Trinity. It's the, it's the absolute joy that comes when we come together authentically, purely. Lay down all the, the shadow elements. Clar you know, purify them. So, um, uh, thank you, Haley. Your expansion on the cards was perfect. Beautiful. Thank you. I love that you share. I mean, I just love that. This is what this is what's so great about these shows and these experiences is coming together like this and sharing in a way that is so synchronistic. It's the unseen. And uh, Haley, this is the first time that you've done that, and I loved it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. That is just awesome. So let's jump in to the hexagrams and the energies of these double sixteens and these double sevens. Um, and also, again, as you're joining, as you're listening, if you have life questions, if you have comments, things like that, please put them in the comments and we'll incorporate them in and I will answer intuitively. If you all have, if any of you have individual questions, I will listen to the Unseen, Spirit, Source, and Symphony and give you their insights and their wisdom. Hexagram uh, number seven. And so hexagram number seven is called the Army. And, the, and what it's speaking to, so this is the overall energy. Here's the overall energy because the 16 becomes a 7. And we have the day and the day, month, and year combined, 16. And then which becomes 7. And it's talking about the army because the army is about correct discipline. So this is again about know thyself see ourselves so as to release. There's, you know, with uh, Eight of Swords, releasing what's stuck, releasing a mask, laying, if I'm telling myself no, or I'm using um, derogatory or harmful language about myself or others or something, lay it down. It's not serving you or anyone else. And that's that's creating a, you know, a, a less than a karmic imprint. So it's talking about, because it's about return, the hidden influence in hexagram seven in the army, correct discipline, is return. Return. Return to source. The way. The way home. There's only one the way. There's our way, but that's not the way. And so here's this, the hidden influence is about returning us to our soul source connection. Returning us home. There's a state of purity about that. There's a state of joy and bliss about that. There's a there's a an aspect there's a, of, of non-struggle. That's where I was saying it doesn't take a thousand obstacles. You don't need to have any obstacles. It can be selfless in the sense that it's just it just is. It's beautiful. 
And here, look at this three of cups. What's the underlining cause of seven? Hexagram seven. Fellowship. Coming together. <laughs> oh, Haley, this was spot on. I'm loving that. Um, so you can see how this comes together. And hexagram seven speaks to, I'm going to share with you a proverb and also a quote. It says, to know fulfillment, nourish what is for the belly, not the eye. And if you do not stand for something, you will fall for anything. So here's this energy, and the Lady Jacqueline is going to make her entrance. So let me uh, shift screens here, and hopefully we are going to be able to bring her in. And, and there she is, and I don't know why we have two in here, so let me just get rid of that. We're live together. <laughs> oh, the Lady Jacqueline. Uh, there we are! <laughs> I feel like it's my uh, alter ego that always joins us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, we just ran with it, and I said, you know what, the Lady Jacqueline, as they said, she's going to make a grand entrance at some point. So here we are. You have not disappointed, and we have missed you. Welcome, welcome back. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much. It's so good to be back. It is. We love having you and your energy. And uh, I don't know if you saw earlier, but uh, Haley, spontaneously, she was actually, uh, she felt drawn to do it. She said, you're so welcome. I felt drawn to do it today. And then with Jacqueline not being there yet, I felt it was the perfect time. And it was spot on. It was like mic drop moment. So I don't know if you've seen it or as you were trying to join us, Jacqueline. Uh, but there we are. I didn't actually see it, so please fill me in. What what happened? Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> so here, okay, so we're going to do a little mini reset, uh, reset, recap the room. It's about today's uh, current energies from the unseen is magic and miracles abound, um, authenticity, that it's a root cause and foundation, and it's about cause and effect, and we have hexagrams. I was just jumping into hexagrams 7 and 16, and Haley came in and she said, you know what? I pulled some tarot cards for the collective, and they were the emperor taking spiritual guidance, especially from a mentor, the chariot having the courage and strength to move forward, the eight of swords recognizing that uh, that what's keep that which is keeping you stuck is yourself, and the bottom of the deck was three of cups coming together with others for your joy. I mean, come on, hello. We just go home now. <laughs> Okay, we done. Bye. <laughs> Bye. We love you. No. And I said, this is why I love this. Yeah, this is why I love these Wednesdays and Thursdays coming together like this. It's just, and how the cards that she pulled are literally in alignment. Again, the unseen mm -hmm. that brings everyone together with the current energies. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Fantastic. Absolutely, 110%. But listen, I mean, everything is synchronized, right? So um, I, it was actually so funny because I was, I was doing a session with a client yesterday and uh, he asked me, he was like, so it's very similar to like, you know, reading human design, very similar to numerology and does it have this kind of aspect and, and it's very similar to this. And I'm like, well, it's supposed to be because <laughs> if it wasn't, then there's something wrong, right? Um, I think the synchronicity is, I think it, when you start playing in this realm, everything becomes so coincidental. And we've spoken about this. Synchronistic, you know, but it's, coincidental, yes. Right, like that magical kind of, um, because it's one golden thread that gets like pulled through all of us. So it's really, it's about letting go of the mind, what the mind perceives and kind of stepping into this, <gasps> surprise like a kid in a candy store kind of feeling like i love that analogy master generator I use it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i use it a lot but it's so true like it literally is that awe that surprise that wonder that duh like that mm. of course of course it's going to be the same yes because you know what we often speak to the unseen in the micro it's our lives and in the macro the whole of the whole and it is you know source is the master weaver and so we have the tapestry as you just spoke to the golden thread that runs through the tapestry 
And each of us then in the micro is a piece, is a thread of that master tapestry and how the synchronicity of all of this and the unseen guiding and saying, okay, we're going to drop this in and everyone's just going to roll and play their role so brilliantly. And, and that's, and, and kudos Haley to you for having the courage to be your authentic self and in this public way, come forward and contribute and share and look at the beauty and the, the acknowledgement and the affirmation of the synchronicity of it. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So Mm -hmm. yes. So Jacqueline, before we jump into, uh, current uh, energies from human design and the gates and everything. I'm going to just wrap up quickly, if I may, the um, launch into the actual hexagrams and everything guiding because the numbers, because today's the 16th, as I had said, and thereby, and the month, day, and year is a 16th. So we have double 16s, double sevens. And Jacqueline and I have been talking about all these doubles, 10, 10, 12, 12, 11, 11, all these doubles that keep appearing. Um, And so I just want to run into that really quickly and share and and it says going down let me get to it here here we are and there's this other beautiful it says the wind excites a thousand different instruments each song is played in its own way where there is conflict individuals rise up and revolt the abysmal water stirs below the receptive earth portraying how custom and duty can erode your sense of loyalty It's about giving away yourself. So when we conform, we are no longer our authentic selves. And this is about don't conform, be your authentic self. And they said, she is a message, she, S-H-I-H, is a message about discovering value in what you do. As the image of many people gathering around a center, peer pressure and the expectations of others can sometimes lead you away from your center. At the same time, When you are cultivating original sincerity, circumstances also bring you together with those of like mind. Here we just three of of cups, Haley. Like mind coming together. Army symbolizes the collective force. Whether in love, business, or professional goals, you may need to establish a a plan of action or strategy. Explore whether you are approaching your object of inquiry with a sense of battle or domination. Participating in the collective force requires balancing individual needs with the respect of others. And I would add with the respect of self. It requires that we respect self and others. She can also symbolize conformity. Beyond the flowery show that bears no fruit, it is the fruit and not the flower that sustains life. The flower is attractive, but if you cut it for display, you will find no nourishment or fruit to sustain. To, pardon me, to sustain you later. This is the image of trading your real nature for acceptance. Oof. The master said, nourish what is for the belly, which I spoke to, this is the quote, nourish what is for the belly and not the eye. You are reminded to do what nourishes and does not deplete you. So what nourishes you and does not deplete you. Whatever has left you feeling empty will lead you in the pursuit of instant gratification as an endless cycle of fulfilling what is missing. When you find yourself drawn to this gratification process, you can be certain that something more fundamental remains unfulfilled within. The nucleus, the uh, the hexagram of return, can bring you back to your center to ask, which is worth more, the person or the title? You can find pleasure in what you do only when it taps and authenticates your full capabilities. In the great field of action, you can become an instrumental part of the collective force only when you are fulfilled and true to your own nature. She is also about a message about working with others in a group. Perhaps you have been isolated and it is time to return to more social interaction. The obstacles you may be encountering might be solved if you were to allow your vision to be added to, added to and augmented by others. Stay true to yourself as no person is an island. It's a mic drop moment for me because everything we've been talking about in the, in the first half of the hour and everything is literally encapsulated in this overall energy of hexagram 
uh, seven. And I'm just going to give you this last quote. When you make your home in the inevitable, you will arrive exactly where you need to be. Mic drop, done. Thank you, universe. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm smiling the entire time because I'm like, mm, it's so on point. <laughs> like, it is so, so on point. Oh, my word. It's beautiful. It's incredible. Mm. So take it. The Lady Jacqueline, it, take it with uh, what's the human design guidance? What's happening with the gates and... And how it's mm. affecting so everyone. It literally ties it ties in so beautifully with what you've just mentioned about stepping into authenticity and stepping into your own personal power. So we've had the gates um, and we still have the sun gate in the or the sun placement in the gate 36, and we're grounded in the earth placement of um, gate six, right? So 36 is all about shifting from turbulence to through hum um, humility into compassion and then we've got grounding in the gate six which is all about conflict and let me actually pull it up so we shift from conflict into let me quickly see so it's quite incredible because when you think of what you're just talking about on authenticity and like stepping into your the gift of diplomacy and that's the gene keys right that's how the that's that's the gene keys explain it as diplomacy but it's actually literally shifting from conflict into peace and if you're thinking of that idea of really being your authentic self and kind of shifting from the inner conflict because everything external starts from the internal right when you're stepping into this raised consciousness and this understanding of how everything actually works it all starts internally and it's this shifting from this internal conflict into internal peace then creates external peace right and in order for you to do that it requires you to open up your heart it requires you to manage and understand your emotions and i say manage because it's like we talk about this all the time james it's like instead of reacting it's consciously responding right and taking inspired action versus kind of like that reactive approach or behavior in your emotional you know turbulence or conflict that's happening so it's about managing your emotions but also moving through them because emotions are just energy in motion and we, if we think about what's happening on the collective um, or in the collective at the moment in the world there's a lot of conflict there's a lot of turmoil there's a lot of it's like that, it's like a, almost like a washing machine right now, right? And if you're not managing your emotions, if you're not aware of how you're feeling, if you're not um, allowing yourself to feel and then let it like, like pass through you, like motion, you know, like having the energy pass through you, then you're able to truly step into who you actually are and not being constantly guided from an emotional place which is influenced from the external environment and that's why i started with that internal environment right it's like really regulate self-regulation knowing who you are what is actually coming up and being compassionate with yourself and also showing compassion for others so with the 36 it's also brought up a lot of the idea of why do we have to suffer so we've shifted from logical energy where we've asked why questions and there was potentially a lot of doubt. I don't know if you guys experienced over the last couple of weeks, but there was like doubt, like what's happening, the uncertainty, you know, maybe you also had your own doubts come up within your own life, but then it's kind of like shifting into, I want to say, stepping into compassion for yourself and other people around you. And that's the higher frequency that then brings us together and that then transcends us from the conflict and the turbulence that we kind of find ourselves in from a day-to-day -day basis and this is not just you know the the worldly conflicts it's also looking at internal or in your own personal life like your own personal journey you know conflicts within the traffic conflicts within relationships or at work or maybe with your kids like you know it's it's a, it's a lot of energy at the moment there's a lot of emotional energy that's also coming up i know the full moon is on the 18th, if I'm if I'm correct, with 17th, yes, 18th, depending Friday. on where you are, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
So that also brings up a lot. I mean, we know, like I know personally, I'm very affected by the moon and what happens with the full moon. And there's a lot of emotions. And I always feel it like weeks before, like a week before at least. And then I know, okay, why is I'm feeling all these emotional feels? Like what's going on? And then I check kind of when is the full moon. So we're already being, I want to say, guided or propelled into this idea of what are we feeling? What is coming up? And not kind of taking it from a, a standpoint of, okay, hold on, I got to try and explain it because it's wrong or I can't feel this way and, and kind of go, okay, I'm feeling this way. What is it trying to show me? What am I still needing to release? You know, like what internal conflicts am I bringing up for myself or I'm creating on my external environment because it's actually coming from internal. So it's a, it's a, it's a lot that's happening. Um, but then also having this awareness that we're really needing to step into compassion and the energy of peace in knowing that everything is the way that it's supposed to be. We're all being guided the way that we're supposed to be. Does it make sense? Absolutely. It's uh, again, everything's purposeful, right? We talk about this all the time. Everything's purposeful. And and again, mm -hmm. spot on here. Here's that golden thread in the tapestry because everything you, you just shared Jacqueline from your human design expertise and guidance is everything that we've been talking about in the show. I mean, I love how this works and it is about mm -hmm. that. It is about having this piece of letting go going as guided, authentic, authenticity, and this coming, because we're at a threshold. They had mentioned at the top of the hour, we're at this threshold. And yes, we're ending the, the astrological season and we're beginning the new astrological season come Sunday, Monday is the okay. transfer. Mm -hmm. And, and this fact of in the uncertainty, as you were speaking to in the uncertainty, be certain in our knowing, meaning not what we know in, in a mental construct, but what we know as in how we're being guided and to do it with, so that we respect ourselves and others. Because when we do that, we are open to the magic and the miracles. We're open to seeing the greater picture. We're open to being for discernment, not judgment. There's a difference. If we're out judging everything, we're missing. We're not seeing the magic and the miracles and everything. However, okay. when we just sit back and we can still feel everything. Of course, you and the moon, me and the moon. Oh, and Haley uh -huh. and others. I, I did a post, <laughs> you know, about the moon. She's she's my fave. I mean, she's just one of my faves. And I look at the beauty of that magic, that miracle. She represents the unknown, revealing what's hidden. Mm -hmm. Well, there's this beauty in allow it, allow it. And in allowing do it with grace, do it with dignity, do it with kindness. So that with to yourself, for yourself and for others. Hmm. I think, you know, it's amazing because when you're talking about allow, allowing, like my practical, you know, self comes out and says, okay, but you know, when we talk about surrender, we talk about allowing, a lot of people might be asking the question, okay, but how do you actually do that when you're in a state of, like crisis or you're feeling, you know, this, this turbulence or you're feeling all of the feels, like how do you actually allow? Because I'm still, even though I have this awareness, I'm, it's like this dance between, okay, allowing and then the logical mind wanting to take over and then allowing and then the logical mind wanting to take over, right? And it's so interesting. I'm reading Dr. Joe Dispenza's book um, of that, that mind book. I can't think of the title right now. And it's incredible because what it, what it shows, and we know this to be true already, is that our thoughts impact, um, they actually release certain chemicals that then create emotions within our body, right? And it's called this loop. So with the emotions in our body, then it generates more thoughts based on how we feel. So we're actually going around in circles. So the first step to really allowing is to first have the awareness of what you're thinking. Because you can't allow anything if you're constantly in this loop of saying something to yourself that is disempowering or repeating a story that is not serving you, that is not empowering, and and or and you're in and or because it's creating the emotions and the emotions are then creating or perpetuating more of those kind of thoughts. So you've got to, the first step is really having the awareness of what you keep thinking on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment basis. 
Like, are you getting stuck and are you jumping on the fear train like everybody else? Are you getting stuck in this idea of who you think you need to be versus who you actually are or what the relationship needs to look like versus what the relationship is, right? Because it's yes. like the story we keep telling ourselves versus actually the truth and then that kind of it's like catching yourself in the moment and the identification is how do i feel if i feel right. frustrated if i feel low if i feel angry if i feel like i'm you know nothing's working out okay it's because i'm keep telling myself well nothing's working out or oh, such a struggle and there's a lot of that struggle energy that's coming up so that we can see hold on we're not designed to struggle yes we're going to have challenges we're going to have mountains to climb because that's part of the transformation that's part of the journey in this human experience that we signed up for right but it doesn't have to be a struggle and the struggle it's, comes from mm -hmm, that first part of that mind right right because again what's the magic or the miracle in the challenge not the struggle the struggle is a choice to see mm -hmm, it yeah. as a struggle is a choice but to see the same challenge as an opportunity, well, now it's shifted from a struggle to a joy. Oh, okay. Oh, now take, and, and you know, there, you use the analogy of climbing the mountain. I had at the time you cycling and I'm literally mm -hmm. looking at it and saying, see, you can look at that and the hundred and some kilometers and this, that, and the other, and whatever my uh, fears that I'm, you know, and the weather and this, and that. that can all be a construct a mental construct of fear and challenge and obstruction and whatever, or it can be, yes, I am in absolute alignment with this. Come what may, it's for my mm. benefit. It's for my benefit, for my opportunity. And of course, mm -hmm. I watch. You know, you're. You know, you at the end having completed it, and I'll see one of your posts, and it's like, yes, and and not only you, but others. You know, like this accomplishment, this sense mm. of. Gratitude, validation, accomplishment, those are all positive aspects, positive energies. Mm. And so, you know, that's, I, I, they use you as an example. They popped it into my mm -hmm. head because you're living it. And you're, mm. and you're also sharing, Jacqueline, the beauty of this energy that we're like, challenge, conflict, challenge. And here, mm. you know, the hexagram was about, um, you know, number seven was about, I want to pull it back up because it's the, it's the correct discipline. Mm. So what's required mm. of us? What's on offer? Correct discipline. Realizing mm. that the challenge is our opportunity. It's not our struggle. Struggle you is know, a choice. It's so like brilliant. You actually just sparked, well, you know, Sort of sparked it because it's like I want to give a practical example. There's a couple of examples actually in this experience. But this is exactly it. It's like living this idea because when so I just what James is talking about. I just completed the Cape Town Cycle Tour, which is for the largest I think the largest cycle race time cycle race in the world actually, and I was joined by like fifteen odd thousand people. But on this day on sunday <clears throat> it was terrible weather like it was absolutely shocking it was just downpour with buckets a lot of people actually didn't even compete it um a lot of people didn't even start the race because it was just the weather was absolutely shocking and if you're a cyclist and you're a road cyclist and you're thinking about you know cycling on the on the on the road in the wet it's a whole different ball game and what's so funny because even leading up to the cycle we, we i kind of knew that the weather was going to be a little bit iffy but I didn't let that kind of like deter me. I thought, okay, well, I just can't, you know what's so brilliant is, and this is what you're talking about is the discipline because it was like, I just put the intention out to say to universe, my goal, my intention is to literally do the race because last year I missed out on being able to do it. It's like 12. And this is my first one. I just want to do it. I want to be safe. I want to have fun. I want to just experience it the way I'm supposed to experience it. So you put everything in, like you, universe, I was speaking to universe, you put everything the way that it's supposed to, and I will show up as myself, like as my highest expression of myself. Like that's literally the prayer that, that I said to myself for the entire, I think it was like two weeks leading up to it. Now, remember, I, I hadn't been cycling by myself. I've always been cycling with like a cycling group. I've got um, my best friend who is my cycling partner who cycles with me. Um, but we qualified in different time categories because he's obviously been doing this for years. So he's a lot faster than I am. 
And I kind of anticipated that I would potentially be doing this by myself, right? Mm. Because I thought, okay, I'm not going to, you know, hold him back, even though it would be quite nice to like have him with me. But I'm really like, there's no one in my category where I've now qualified. And I, I, again, I just said the prayer and I said, okay, universe, like, you just put everything in play. Like, I know, like, the fear is already kicking in because I thought, oh, I'm doing this by myself. What happens if I get a punch? You know, the logical mind, the chitter chatter, that story we talked about, if you keep replaying for yourself. But I just maintained the truth, right? The truth of the matter is, what is my goal? What is the reason I'm doing this? And this is kind of going for everybody when you're, when you're faced with the situation. And I wrapped my mind around it. I had a little bit of a wobble like the night before. I phoned like my mom. I had a little bit of a pet talk to myself. And the next morning I woke up and I was like, okay, that's cool. Like, let's do this. And I, and I got there and I had a bit of a wobble again. Like, you know, the, the jitters, the fears, the what if the logical mind wants to come through. And I started the race. And honestly, it was one of the best rides I've ever done in my life. Like I had angels i call them angels like on the side of the road with me people that i had met that would lead the way for me like guys would just come up and be like oh this is your first one go like just grab the wheel and like guide me like i i knew what to do but they were just giving me guidance anyway and i was taking it and i was like i'm loving it thank you so much and it was honestly like i finished it and i just it was the most incredible race that i've done to date and when i was done i was speaking to a lot of the cyclists around and all of them had excuses. Like all of them were like, oh, I had so many mechanicals. Or, oh, my time was so terrible. Or, oh, the weather is just terrible. Or like they, everyone had this, this turbulence, this conflict, this story, this energy of, of ex instead of having compassion and, and peace around what was actually happening, they just really were making all these excuses. And I just smiled and I said, well, you finished you you did it you, you didn't did fall like you're healthy you're happy like you're able to do it you're here you're alive you're breathing you're you know what i mean and i just smiled because in that moment i was like wow look at the two different scenarios of how you can approach an exact same situation and for me i literally had tears just before i finished the finish line because it was just this culmination of i have so much gratitude to be able to have approached it in this way and be guided and supported and appreciated by source, literally taking me across the finish line. And you, you know, and epitomizing this story epitomizes allowing, okay. alignment, purity of intention, the sincerity of it, and we we spoke or, uh, with K uh, Haley in the cards, the chariot, and the issue was how you need to be one with. So here's a perfect analogy: you need to be one with yourself, the bike, the road, the environment, and in order to do that, you have to surrender, you have to blend, you have to harmonize. Three of cups, you have to come together in this unified way, and your your personal experience and, and story that you just shared epitomizes all of these things and it also epitomizes as you just said the difference in experience when our focus because when you were talking about oh the weather and mechanics and this and that their experience was about something else meaning their focus their intention their so here same event same same route same weather same everything and multiple different experiences because they had masks on, they had layers on, they had, I want this and I, and it must be that. And, and those are masks. You went into it and said, I just want to be, I want to receive this mm -hmm. in the, in the highest and best way. Show it to me. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, I can't even explain to you guys like when you get to do this and I'm not talking about cycling I'm talking about exactly what James is talking about the allowing surrendering the pure intention the trust in knowing you don't not have fear like yeah. you don't not yeah. have those thoughts right right but you 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 still have the human experience you're still right. going to have the thoughts you're going to have the doubts you're going to have the all patterns that are going to come up but 
when you truly like you're you're more you're leaning more this way than that way like this way being you know higher conscious and empowering versus that way like the disempowering the limiting belief you know the shadow side allowing that versus feeling, controlling 100 percent. <laughs> go on like, sorry i just had to throw that in <laughs> No, a 100, because it's so true. Like, I mean, I learned this through cycling, the control versus allowing, like the surrendering versus controlling, because there was points as well where I was riding and I'm thinking, well, should I push? And I'm like, what, why do I need to push? Like, what's happening? Yeah, like, just cycle. Like, you're enjoying it. Look at this. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm aware. Look what I'm doing. I'm cycling. I'm on my own. Wow. Like, literally, like, kid in a candy store, supplies are, like, or, um, like surrender it is the most absolutely thrilling feeling that it's just and it's not even it takes you high and it drops you like you know that that extreme excitement and then all of a sudden it drops like it's not like that it's just this it's peace it's compassion for the experience it's the words that we're talking about today yes. that it's truly like that golden thread it feels like something is just right it feels like you're connected it feels like oh my gosh, it, it just lives on that moment, that experience. And then you know, it's like these, these moments in time that then become your benchmark for what you're reaching for consistency. Because now I know, oh, this is the feeling of alignment, like true alignment of, of um, you know, when they talk about the monks go away and they sit on a mountain, you know, to, to get enlightenment, to get that alignment. I experienced it on a, on a bike in a race because I surrendered, because I allowed, because I danced with this human experience. And now it's like easier for me to go, oh, that's the feeling that I'm reaching yes. for. Oh, that's the experience that I'm, that I'm wanting to draw into. So I really like, and it can happen like that in a practical human experience, which is literally doing. Because you allowed. Be yeah, because, because you allowed. allowed. Mm. And that's the, that is the true piece of it. And Jacqueline, you know, they, they speak about this a lot with um, actors, dancers, performers, singers, and they'll say that they were one with the dance or they were one with the part, the role they were playing. And you can tell, people can tell. It is that, that energy and that essence when someone is so one with what they're doing there. Because you'll often see when someone is in, when they are one with the dance, there is mm -hmm. no separation between the dance and themselves, the, the, the soul that is performing it. It is one. The actor, the great actor in the moment that you can't tell them apart because they are. And then you can tell when it's the ones that are, it's a, a, a few seconds delay. The mind is working, which is about thinking, which is about controlling, which is about you're thinking the part or the role mm -hmm. or the dance as opposed to I am it. I am. And that's the difference between controlling and allowing. Excuse and gratitude in your in your beautiful story. And sometimes it's gonna it's gonna take time. I mean, if I look at the experience, it sounds like it was just a culmination on one day and I got it, or maybe like a week leading up and I got it. No, like it's literally it's been a year. And a couple of months of cycling in terms of getting this experience through cycling it's taken a year of controlling self-sabotage falling like limiting beliefs like learning through the metaphor of riding a bike and falling and getting injured and then you know having the experience of what it truly means not to compete not to try and control not to you know live the lower vibration and actually live the higher vibration of the plan and not my plan right and so I just want to kind of lovingly remind each and every single one of you that it's, it, it seems like it's a split second and it, and it happens so inst instantaneously, but it is part of the journey. It's part of the, it does happen. And when it happens, it happens, but it sometimes it's going to, it's, it's for it truly to sink in. It is the journey. It is part of the experience. It's like, don't yeah. try again, force the experience experience of I want to feel that enlightenment no no like literally take one inspired action after the next take one experience after the next the opportunity to actually see the truth of what is unfolding so that you can then be open enough to actually receive and this is what this week with this 
the, the 36 and the 6. It's about opening your heart. And what does it actually mean? It means opening your heart enough to actually be brave and courageous enough to deal with all the hurts, the old patterns, the limitations, the not self, right? To be courageous and brave enough to deal with that. And then boldly stepping into your truth, your personal power that you already know, like your soul already knows it. And it's kind of like peeking its head every time more and more and more until eventually it like bursts open. Um, and then that's kind of when you experience it and you go, oh, like that makes so much sense. <laughs> because of choice choice yeah. choice choice because you're choosing you're choosing to allow you're choosing these things you're choosing to see the magic and miracles and what you just said it, it just sparked because i had forgotten to share it you know hexagram 16 is enthusiasm and it speaks to mm -hmm. new energy and inspiration and look at what you're here everything you've just discussed that leads to so when we're, you're in this alignment and you allow and you're and it's part of the journey and you keep choosing, it creates inspiration. It, it, it creates enthusiasm. It creates this new energy within you. And like we talk about, right, Jacqueline, we said we go to the gym to exercise our bodies. We do different things. You, you're talking about reading uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza's book. It, we and Wallace D. Waddles. We're reading things that exercise our minds. Minds. Mm -hmm. This is about exercising your soul, your soul source connection. Because as Jacqueline's speaking to the fact that it's part of the journey, it's because you're exer you're choosing and you're exercising this faith, this full faith and trust, this authenticity, this soul source alignment. And it requires practice, exercising, mm -hmm. until it becomes second nature, until we release. And, it, and again, we're human. We're having a human experience. We're a soul in a human body. The mind, the ego mind is there to protect. So it's going to be like you were saying, you know, like, oh, here comes, you know, here comes a little fear or here comes a little anxiety or I'm going to have a meltdown. I'm calling my mom, you know, okay. <laughs> and then showtime and you're okay. right in the pocket. You're right in the, and you will, you choose, you're exercising your soul source connection and you choose highest, just give, show me my highest and best. Allow me to experience that. That's, that's my intention. That's my my purpose here. And then all of a sudden, what does source do? Oh my gosh. They give us far more than we could have ever chosen in the sense of controlled, mm -hmm. left to our own ego mind, personality devices. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden you're getting this experience at the end of that ride <laughs> while you're watching everybody yeah. else go, wah, 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 and you're like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> Hundred percent, and it is. It's like they orchestrate everything once you release and surrender. Like everything is just, it's there beautifully for you, and you literally look at it like in awe. Like, oh, of course, like of course I'd be supported. Of course there would be a person to guide me out. Of course I would have more energy. And that Harry mm -hmm. met Sally analogy, because they got me in your head going, you're over there just overjoyed and having this wonderful yeah. thing. And everybody looks over and goes, I'll have what she's having. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the universe, the magic, the miracles, they provided it because you allowed it. Mm -hmm. And look, I mean, it's making me smile, 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 because I'm like, yeah. yes, yes, yes. No, absolutely. 100. You know, and I even saw it towards the end because, um, there's the last, uh, I would say probably maybe like 10, like 15 Ks or maybe even 20 Ks. Uh, and now just bearing in mind, I have already cycled like 90 Ks at this point and through rain and I've climbed already elevation. And I'm, I'm getting to a part that I really, really know. And I thought to myself, oh gosh, I know this road. I'm going to, and it stopped raining. So I'm going to latch onto a wheel and I'm just going to give it like, I'm going to go, I'm going to give it gas, right? And these three guys in front of me, they, they look like really great cyclists and, I, and I'm holding onto the wheel and I'm going speeds that I know is surpassing the speeds that I would normally go on the straight <laughs> to get to basically the wind where we're going to go to the finish line. And I'm just holding on and I'm so, I'm feeling like so secure and I'm just, we're going past people and we're going down the road and I get to a corner and then they eventually they drop me because they are so fast. And then I'm like, oh, and then I pick up another wheel and we go again. And 
the whole time I'm thinking, I was like, gosh, like, where is this energy coming from? But it wasn't even a thought of like doubt. It was like, whoa, I've got energy. Like, wow, okay, cool. Like, let's do this. Let's explore. Let's take this opportunity, you know, like in life, like opportunities yes. are going to come and we're going to be like, whoa, like I actually want to like explore what, what, is, what am I capable of doing? Like, let's do this, you know, because you're in that allow way. And I'm going through and I see the finish line. So eventually I kind of just slow down just a little because I know people on the side of the road that are also waiting for me there. And I want to kind of catch them, like, you know, catch a glimpse of them. And I cross the finish line and this guy behind me, he like calls out my surname because my surname's on my, my back on my number. And he said, and he calls out my surname and he's like, I just want to say thank you. And I was like, okay, like for what? And he's <laughs> like, you carried me that last 10 kilometers across oh. the finish line. And I looked at him and I'm like, Three what? Cups. And he's like, you carried, like, thank you, you carried me. Like, if it wasn't for you, I would not have made this last stretch. And I looked at him going, oh, my word, like, me taking an opportunity of focusing on the joy of, like, seeing what I'm capable of, which is stepping into my true authentic power, and then doing what, what's my, which is part of my soul's purpose, which is to guide this dude behind me that I didn't even notice was behind me, like, guiding him the entire way. So the whole point is like for me, I was like, you don't even have to try hard to fulfill your purpose. If you're truly standing in the highest expression of you, you will automatically do it. And look, and that is Haley, three of cups. That was at the, the bottom yeah. of the deck. And look at that, your energy, your soul source connection, alignment, radiating that you weren't doing, you weren't mentally focused on it. You're in the pocket doing what you do, and and literally somebody else received mm -hmm. the the value, the beauty of that energy. That's incredible. It's so we're we're mindful of the time. We do have one question which we're going to jump to. Um, and before we do that, just to wrap up, we're we're talking about magic and miracles. We're talking about authenticity. We're talking about this alignment and allowing, and when we are our authentic selves we shine and they are literally double 16s double sevens it is about correct discipline is it about enthusiasm and as you heard throughout the the show and with the beauty uh, beautiful testimonials with the lady jacqueline this is how that energy this this cosmic tapestry this golden thread just radiates and shimmers and plays out through each individual life soul and the greater whole and it's amazing and so before we close out the show uh Lori is saying i am planning to close my business in april and nervous about what's next any insight for me so i'm just busy pulling up a chart james i'm gonna you I'm, dive in with yes what's sure so mm -hmm. so Lori, they immediately showed me the full card in the tarot which represents take a leap of faith this has been a long time coming. It represents the old you, and you are ready for, for more, for a greater uh, expansion, greater, because you're coming into such a great awareness of self, of surrounding, of environment, of who you, we've been speaking about authenticity, about who you really are. And so it's just time. They're showing me the, uh, the snake shedding its skin. This will always be a part of you. Everything is purposeful. Everything is purposeful. This is just about your next, the next you, the, your, your greater, this next expansion of self. So take the leap of faith, knowing, because they're saying to me, knowing that you already know. You already know. You already know what's coming is going to be great. You just have to do the releasing part. The challenge, as we spoke about, you know, the challenge is an opportunity. It doesn't have to be uh, suffering. It doesn't have to be hard. So, uh, you know, you see me smiling. You can hear it in my voice. Be happy about the release, the shedding, the letting go, so as to receive. Jacqueline. Mm. Uh, so the first, let me quickly look. So the first thing... So the fears, okay, because it's like um, you're nervous about what's next, what's next. So as a manifesting generator, you do move quickly. 
right? So it's kind of allowing yourself to move quickly and not keeping yourself stuck on something that is no longer serving you, like James has beautifully said. So it's kind of checking in with your energy, right? Your energy is said, it's done now. Like you need to actually, there's something new on the horizon that's waiting for you that you're making space for by closing the one thing. So again, it's, it's I'm giving you the invitation to trust in your intuitive knowing because you know, you know the next thing already. You already, you already know it. No, not like logical knowing, feeling knowing, intuitive knowing, gut response knowing, right? And I want to quickly pick on the fears that are coming up for you because it's the nervousness is based on those fears. But also nervousness could also be the excitement of the unknown, right? If you do have an open head and under, so it's the, the shadow side is the certainty of wanting to know all the answers, like wanting to know exactly what's next so that you could prepare so that you don't fail. Because with the fears, it's like the fear of failure, the fear of, fear of not fulfilling my purpose, the fear of, am I actually going to be able to cope? Yes, you are, right? Because you've been given the gifts of resilience. You've been given the gifts of um, intuitive knowing in the moments of where, what and where to go next, what to do next and where to go next, right? So check in to, to, with yourself and see how you're feeling, right? And that nervousness, is one of two things. It's the nervousness that is preparing you and getting you ready for the new that is already there, that is around the corner, that it's showing itself slowly but surely as and when you open up to the experience because your body will guide you to your next inspired step. And also being consciously aware of the fears that are coming up, like the fear of failure, what happens if I don't succeed, what happens if I don't get what I want, what happens if I don't cope, right? Or I'm not fulfilling what I'm truly designed to fulfill. And also that certainty, that, that, that desire of wanting to know, of wanting to be certain, of wanting to know all the answers. Because when we do something for the first time that's new, we don't know all the answers, right? Like if you look at my example of, of cycling completely by myself, like I didn't know what to expect. I just knew I knew how to cycle. Like I could, I could fall back on, like fall back on what you know already, what your gifts are, what your strengths are while leaving space for the surprise of what the potential could look like, right? And what the opportunity can unfold because when you're coming from a place of having a story that is serving you, that is empowering you, then you're actually allowing, you're opening your heart, you're making space, you're allowing for the universe to orchestrate everything. Because when you set the intention of what you want, the how is the universe's job. Right, and this is what we we're speaking about, about pure intention. What is the intention that you want? What is the next step that you desire? And then allow the universe to sort out the how, to orchestrate all the little pieces. And all you're doing is be consciously aware of how you feel. What is your vibration at any given moment? And are you doing what truly satisfies you? Then everything, it's literally, you're gonna have like that fulfilled, most elated like feeling that we were explaining when I crossed the finish line, that's exactly what you're going to be feeling as well. Mm -hmm. And I just want to tag on, they, they gave me one other thing that popped in while you were speaking, Jacqueline. So Lori, make sure that you are clear about not identifying who you are with this business that's closing. You are not this business, meaning you are the custodian of the experience. And so again, in the snake analogy, they're showing how the snake is still the snake. It has new skin. There is still a piece of you. There's a residue, an, Im, an, Im, uh, an imprint, an energy of the, in the analogy of the snake skin that's being released. So don't identify, don't self-identify with, well, who am I if I don't have this business? Who am I? You know, this is who I am. No. That's a piece of the experience. Who you are is the next experience. It's it's you're the custodian of this soul source embodiment, and thereby that's the beauty. So letting go of the skin, not to worry. I'm still here. I'm still standing, because there's yet to be another new experience for you, and that's so applicable for all of us. It's it's a really beautiful uh, reminder to not identify with. It's a mask. Don't identify with something. Re thank it, release it, and accept. Make space for the new. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Absolutely. So everyone, thank, thank you. you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Right. Thank you all for joining us.
the Lady Jacqueline for making an incredibly grand entrance. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I looked at? Like, I looked at the time because I thought I was early. I was like, okay, I'm 30 minutes before the time. What is Jane talking about? Like 6 p.m. my time. And I'm looking, did I miss the boat completely? Like, you started at 5 my time. So did we, like, switch in hours? Like, did we go an hour ahead? We went an hour ahead. So, because we normally start 6 p.m. my time, but now it's only 6.20. And that's why I was so confused when you were like, um, hello, where are you? And I'm thinking, um, I'm, I'm, yeah, what do you mean? We, <laughs> see, there's Mercury, there's, yeah. the, there's the universe. In the U.S., Jacqueline in, in South Africa, they don't change, they don't recognize no. daylight saving time. We in the U.S., <laughs> we do. And funny enough, just this past Saturday evening into Sunday, we went forward. We leapt forward, spring forward. And so obviously that's why we're off on our time. So we're back to our original time from last year, which is so funny. So the Lady Jacqueline and I need to sync up here. <laughs> see? We, like, now, see, see, <laughs> see, Jacqueline, this completely affirms the truth that the Lady Jacqueline and I, when we do these shows, we don't speak mm -hmm. before. We are, we literally, we listen, we come in live and I'm like, where is she? And she's going, why is he so early? And what's yeah. going on? And this, and yet look at the beauty mm -hmm. of the tapestry that's woven when it all comes together because we just, we flow with it. We went with it. We walk the talk here and we just go. <laughs> And we might be scratching our heads <laughs> on both sides. <laughs> but look at the beauty of the testament of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The authenticity, you know, and the surprise and the opportunity that arises when you are just, not even just, when you are living in your highest expression most of the time. So like you're reaching yeah. for it all of the time. You know what I mean? And the beauty of the examples between you, the Lady Jacqueline, myself, dear James, Haley coming in. And before we close out the show, Haley, really, truly, what an awesome thing. And I, and she had mentioned that she was able to do this or because it felt like home. It felt like a safe place. And that just, you know, that makes me want to well up because that is such a gift. And I am, I am so on behalf of the Lady Jacqueline and I thank you for that because mm -hmm. And look at how it affirms what we're talking about. When we all just show up authentically, when we all just allow, when we all just release control and the masks and the stuff, magic and miracles abound. <laughs> and a lot of humor. So I don't know about for the Lady Jacqueline, but I'm like laughing going, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, once again, this thing of like, well, we went forward. It's now we're, now we're at the same time again. Never crossed my mind that it's going to mess mm -hmm. up the time for the Lady Jacqueline. And she's like, yeah. what's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I can see because Haley also, like being in the UK, their clocks haven't changed yet. And I know this because I actually asked a client of mine yesterday. And I was like, when are your clocks changing? And he's like, oh, the 27th of March. I'm thinking, okay, so if I schedule it for this time, does it automatically change on the 27th of March? Like, and I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, we are the only ones in South Africa that don't change our time. Like, we literally, and it's so hilarious. And the U.S., the Senate, U.S. Senate just passed a bill saying no, daylight saving time will be the permanent time. And they're like, uh, Congress? President, hurry up, get it on his desk and sign it because everyone in the in the U.S. is just so tired of bouncing back and forth and back and forth and back and forth twice a year. You can't, it, and it wreaks havoc on everyone. And so we're like, and like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, uh, hello. Yeah. So yes. But so, yeah, we were here and we had a fabulous show. We sure, so as as we do, so yes. Much. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for you guys have been staying on for longer than an hour. I really, really appreciate it. I know you had James in the beginning. It was absolutely incredible to hold space for you guys again. As always, uh, if you like this, you know, join us on um, within our Facebook group as well, because that's also where we're going to connect even more. And then tag your friends that need to hear this. Tag family members, tag spouses, tag partners. Um, you know, the more we can share this, the, the higher the vibration we can actually lift and we can shape 
and we can transform the consciousness which is which is ideally exactly what we're kind of like the purpose of of everything the mission behind what we're doing in the first place absolutely so thank you all again for joining us and we will see you tomorrow bye guys you've been listening to dear james live gain intuitive insight answers and advice to your life questions and so much more by tuning in next week and visiting dearjames.com.